right now i just finished before they are hanged by joe abercrombie which is book two in the first law trilogy and i get to share with you my non-spoilery and spoilery thoughts about this fantastical grim dark sequel it's kind of creepy but i feel like even with this graphic very dark grim book that um, in the future, this one will be near and dear to my heart. Don't know what that says about me, but there it is. So, <laughs> getting into the non-spoilers section. Uh, book one, like I said, amazing character development. Each character had their own background, motivations, wants, desires, etc. And that just serves for the purpose of book two. Now, with all of these fleshed out characters, Abercrombie has added a very interesting plot to this second book. And it's interesting because the characters that we follow are kind of taking the back seat to the decisions. Uh, so the side characters, like all of the kings, queens, politicians, and just the political figures in this world, they're the ones making the decisions. They're the ones who are driving the plot. But yet we're following these, I don't want to call them unimportant, but basically unimportant characters to the plot in general. And we follow them as they just try to survive the horrific world that these people in power are creating. Getting into the world building in this book. Uh, Abercrombie did such a masterful job at this. Now, with this being a new genre for me, the story felt fresh and new and even very modern, I felt like. But uh, he presented the world in such a classic fantasy genre way. It gave me the feels of The Fellowship of the Rings, which this is not a rehash of the story. It just proves how much I loved this book because I compare it to one of my all-time favorite reads from my childhood, The Lord of the Rings. Now, he does this with um, the, the journey, the traveling story. And throughout this journey, our group of characters start to get to know one another a lot, a lot better. And they start sharing stories and with myths and legends and also the history of the world. So it, as they gradually progress throughout their journey, so did the world building. It gradually branched out as they were getting farther along down the road, which I thought was really fun. And it felt very organic and very relatable. Now, unlike the um, pretty classic uh, fantasy traveling story that has, has been told, that it can get very long-winded. But Abercrombie gives us little writing hints of time um, moving forward without getting long-winded. Like, for, for instance, a character will notice that he finally has some beard stubble growing in, or, you know, they're sitting around the fire thinking, my gosh, when was the last time I had a decent meal? Now, because the journey focused more on the storytelling, and the storytelling is what helps build up this world, we're focused less on the actual act of traveling itself and more on the world building, which is my favorite way to understand a world instead of, you know, I want it to wash over me. I don't want to be info dumped and force fed all of this just facts about the world. That is pretty much it for my non-spoilery portion of this review. So if you haven't read it, fair warning, I'm going to go into character spoilers right now. So if you haven't read the book, stop, bookmark this video for later, go read before they are hanged, highly recommend it, come back and let's chat about the characters. I have to start with the most surprising character for me in book two. That was Jazal. Now in book one, I could not give two cents about his character. I couldn't give two cents about what he wanted, what he aspired to be, couldn't care less. And most of the book, I was just hoping he would, you know, shut his mouth and someone would give him a smack or two. 
and what do you know Abercrombie went ahead and did just that Giselle gets a major smackdown and somehow in the depths of despair he finds some humility and wow his character arc is so complete that I'm like all right Giselle so if you keep this up I am pretty much on your side so I you know I still don't understand his place in the group or the plot as a whole um besides the fact that you know he went on this journey in order to grow as a human being and I hope in book three he gets a uh, pretty cool resolution to his story. All right, going from my most surprising character into my favorite character, which is Logan Nine Fingers. He is so down to earth and humble and straightforward, and that is so refreshing in a character. And I love um, his little sayings that kept getting sprinkled throughout. Um, he was rehashing what his father told him growing up. Uh, be, a re be realistic, son. And, you know, life is about uh, doing better the next time. He had so much wisdom in just um, short one-liners that helped his relationships with the other characters. I loved his relationship with Giselle after he was injured. It felt just like um, a big brother, a big mentor, pointing him in the right direction. And I feel that without Logan, uh, Giselle wouldn't have made the complete character arc that he did. In addition, Logan's slow build relationship with Pharaoh. Now, she is probably one of the more underrated characters. Uh, she definitely is very closed off and like a block of cement. And Logan is just, just barely chiseling away at her hard exterior. Pharaoh uh, held on to who she was as a person. She didn't just give way and let go and become a, a whole new character who just, you know, gets along with everybody because it's easier for them. No, she holds on to the important parts of herself and what her background has prepared her for. But she also just has this awkward, gritty relationship with Logan. Never have I rooted for a more awkward, gritty um, love story to blossom into a happily ever after. And I'm sure if that happens, that Logan and Pharaoh will ride off into the sunset, slaughtering a giant demon horde for their honeymoon. All right, can you close the door? I'll be done in a little bit, okay? Thanks, sweetie. Bye, dear boys. Okay, I love you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Dad. The heating pad's in your room on your bed, okay? Oh, Ed. I know, sorry. I just came back. What? Don't touch the bed. It, it, don't move the camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. Getting into more of our sketchy, grittier characters, and I will start with Colonel West now. And, you know, although in this book he didn't have a complete redemption arc, I feel that towards the end of the book I started to... Um, get back on board with him because he definitely he made a lot of tough but uh good decisions and i'm curious now that he's in league with the group of northmen that he will find the place he needs to be so maybe you know with his personality he was a little bit um suppressed and uh, restricted in the union but uh, being with the Northmen has given him more of a freedom to um, explore his darker self, which in turn might, you know, help him reach a happy medium. Finally ending with Glockta. Now, he is the most awful character that I just have to love. <laughs> he is given the most impossible tasks. 
he basically is put into situations where it is guaranteed that he will be put to death or he will naturally die in the scheme of this grand war. And Glockta knows this. His character understands that, you know what, I'm probably going to die, but I'm not going to take it lying down. I'm going to get up and make the best of this completely awful situation. And he is so resourceful in this book and just scrappy and just conniving, plotting that I can't, I can't believe he keeps getting out of these situations. But he does with the most disgusting poise you can imagine. Thank you so much for watching this little review on the book Before They Are Hanged. And I love hearing from you down in the comment. What are you reading right now? How do you guys feel about the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie? And if you like tall, dark, and grim fantasy books and you cannot lie, go ahead and like and subscribe.